Much of my research is based on identifying patterns. Have you ever wondered why the James Bay in Canada is both the shape and the near identical size as Florida, except in negative relief? This little clue left behind leads us to an incredible discovery revealing how the eastern half of North America was shaped during the cataclysm. Welcome to Coronal Loops of North America and the Plume Serpent. Plasma researcher Andy Hall has shown convincingly in presentations that coronal loops existed on the surface of the Earth during a cataclysm in great antiquity, leaving behind butterfly wing impressions on the ground. Coronal loops are the huge loops of magnetic field arcing over the surface of the Sun, or in our case, the surface of the Earth, where hot, glowing, ionized loops scarred the land. One such butterfly wing scar can be found in South Dakota. The Black Hills on the west represent the positive magnetic pole, and the Badlands on the east represent the negative magnetic pole of a coronal loop that occurred on the surface of the Earth. Once you understand what formed the Badlands, it is really quite extraordinary to zoom down into the zone and view the Lichtenberg scarred surface. Imagine if you were standing here on the plateau of the original surface, coronal loops stripping soil up around you in a giant arc of plasma. When we step back above these formations, we can see the butterfly wings as a surface effect of the coronal loops, pulling material up from the Badlands and metamorphosing it into the Black Hills granite. Coronal loops will manifest like cords directly connecting regions, and on the outer edges of the Black Hills, these cord connections become clear to the naked eye. I always like to ask, where did all the rock go? In this case, the limestone of the Badlands went into the Black Hills. Let's look back at James Bay, and I will walk you through a much larger manifestation of the wings. If we clip the region of the Hudson Bay and use simple graphic software, we can remove the water from blocking our view and allow us to look for symmetries. To the right is Florida, and to the left is the empty Hudson and James Bay. Nothing here is corrected for size. The scale of each image is geographically the same. When we place James Bay over Florida, we find a snug fit, but more importantly, we discover a symmetry between the southwest end of the Appalachian Mountains and the Hudson Bay. When we step back and view the east coast of North America from the approach and orientation of Venus, we see now that these two formations, the Hudson Bay and the Appalachian Mountains, share the same formation event. A coronal loop spanned the eastern half of North America pulling material up from the Hudson Bay and Arctic and depositing it along the field lines of the coronal loops forming the Appalachian Mountains and much of the geography of the eastern half of the United States. The heat radiation of the negative Canadian loop metamorphized a broad segment of the Earth's crust into granite as the ions left the surface, leaving severe pockmarks in the Earth. The Hudson Bay Depression represents the northern umbra of a sunspot and a large chunk of Tennessee and Alabama represent the southern umbra. The Great Lakes is then positioned directly under the coronal arc in the west and if you follow the Niagara escarpment out to the east it magically takes us down the body of a surface discharge that ripped across the ground ending in a giant and nearly perfect circle called Prince Edward Island. Rock does not just erode in a circle. This is an electrical feature. The magnetic coronal loops ran north-south, likely aligned with the Earth's magnetic pole. And the electric charge ran from the Great Lakes to Prince Edward, east-west. In the end, we have the electrical charge at a right angle to the magnetic field, just as you would expect to find. For your consideration, I present the following hypothesis. Survivors of Central and South America, looking east, would have seen the coronal loop with the plasma discharge occurring at the Great Lakes, with a long body leading down to a tail at Prince Edward Island. 
These are the necessary parts of a feathered serpent god, and it is my hypothesis that this is the true origin of the plumed serpent legend. As I always like to say, if it isn't true, it makes great fiction. In the second part of this video, we'll look at the river formations of the Midwest. Please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment down below. Peace.